but how we use technology to democratize, how we use technology to bring equity, and then how we try to minimize, if possible, the disruptive elements that could create, create widen the rift between the haves and the have-nots. So if, if I can, can let's Please. roll this back in together. Okay. So talking about equity, you mentioned um, you know, the Pittsburghers of the new transit, the old transit. There is a lot of strong information out there that, for instance, uh, rail patrons will walk half a mile to a rail station. They'll walk past a bus stop to get to their rail car. There's a different cachet in that. Mm -hmm. When we look at consumption of transit, historically, the third quintile for income would not take a bus because they'd come from the bus, and not needing the bus was a symbol of yes. success, right? So that's one thing we deal with. Um, we deal with uh, gentrification and displacement. You know, there's a lot of conversations about why ridership is shifting nationally, but we cannot ignore the fact that many of our traditional transit neighborhoods are livable. They have the bones to be livable. They're built to human scale. They you feel like you want to be there, so folks are displacing those traditional residents, but not quickly enough, we can go get them from A to B. Um, I wanna agree with Diana on if you don't look like your community, can the community trust you to serve? And, and something that, that our staff has heard, Fred's heard me say like 85 times, we, don't run our, we run our service, we don't own it. Our communities own it. We have to be out with our communities starting from the beginning, I think, uh, the story we're telling now for what BRT will do in our Oakland corridor and out through the east and to Braddock and all, that it's a different story because we're with our communities. Um, but I wanna anchor that back, not just the stories we can talk about, but what can we get from Railvolution? So the best, best, best panel I heard in Denver last year was on opening the doors for access to information and decision-making for impacted populations. And short version was, you know, the, the, the council president in Braddock didn't need anybody to come tell her what her community needed. She just needed the door open so she could go get that for her community. And it's, that's a local example of a St. Paul and a Minneapolis story. So I think we also need to make sure technology is facilitating that. So I can be, you know, transitina, dreamer of the great transit dream, but technology should exist to remove friction. And it doesn't have to be something that's smartphone exclusive. We're swimming in technology that tells us where our buses are and how many people are on them. And are we using that technology to improve the quality of the service for every single person riding that? I think that's the onus that has to be put on us as we're receiving these public dollars in. How are we making sure that everyone has equal access to the benefits that are coming back from that? The, the only piece I would add is um, we want to think about it again, big technology and simple steps, right? So. You know, we, we've got, you know, you, we, Bill, at, Mayor Peduto had asked who all has a phone and everybody lifted it. Everybody has a phone, even in our, even the targeted underserved communities. So how do you use texting differently, right? How do, you, how do you take advantage of that phone as a tool to communicate in real time around transportation? And then the other one is Facebook, right? I mean, everybody in our, in our neighborhoods have access mm -hmm. and look at, use Facebook. And so how do we get smart about the type of, tools that exist today that we can plug into, and then what are ones, newer ones, that we can use in a creative and And if we're way. asking you to text, are we <clears throat> helping underwrite the cost of that message? So if I'm texting you what your detour mm -hmm. is, but it costs you 15 cents and I send you 30 texts in well, a day, so that's 450. I would add just a couple of things on this. One is technology changes and leads to jobs and employment and business growth opportunity. And so we're pretty interested in how we can use the traditional businesses of Pittsburgh to invest in those that are emerging, particularly minority-owned businesses, mm -hmm. so we can create jobs within in needed communities. And I think if you um, fuel job growth and subsistence, then you're creating thriving communities. Um, more significantly, we're also, I think, as a region, thinking about how we reinvent our, our education and approach to training and our learning processes so everybody can understand how technology um, can help improve their career and as a part of their career and they're prepared to take part in, in that um, benefit to the right. broader region. So I think those, the idea of jobs and business creation is another very significant benefit of the technological revolution.